Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Weintraub. Welcome to another installment of SEL Meditation and Art. So today we are going to look at Elmer the Elephant by David McKee. We're going to create an Elmer the Elephant to show that we are all unique and all full of bright colors. So today you will need a piece of paper, a pencil with an eraser, and some markers or crayons to draw and create with me. So come on, let's go. I'm feeling real happy about this today. Um, and I know and I learned from Elmer the Elephant that we are all unique and different. So in order to show that we are all unique and different in the world, we are going to use every color in the color wheel. We're gonna use primary colors and secondary colors to make ourselves feel good and happy just like Elmer the Elephant was at the end of his story. So, um, remember, primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. And remember, secondary colors are green, purple, and orange. Okay? So get your pencil and your paper ready as we begin to draw our very own Elmer the Elephant. So the first thing we need to do is draw the elephant's head and its long trunk. So here we go. You're going to start off by making a backward C. Can everybody see that? We're going to make a backward C on our paper. Then we're going to make, from that C, we're going to attach a J. Make sure you attach the letter J to it. Then you're going to pull that J on a curve all the way up. See that? Make sure you make the lines dark enough and bold so you can see it. So I hope everybody can see that at home. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make its ears. An elephant has two very large ears. So I'd like you to make a hill on the left side and then a hill on the right side. So now our elephant has his ears. Once you have that done, we're going to continue on to our next step of drawing his body. So his body is going to be in an oval shape. So from where the ears are, we are going to make a large oval and bring it into the bottom of the head where the trunk meets, right at the beginning of the trunk. See that? Leave a little gap between the trunk and the body. The next thing we're going to put on our picture is four large rectangles. Okay, and that's going to re represent the elephant's feet. So we're going to do one, and then we're going to attach the second one, two, three, four. So we have four large rectangles for his feet. Next, we're going to make little hills, three of them on each of the rectangles to show his nails on the bottom of his feet. Here we go, okay, and then we are going to add his face. I want you to make two circles for his eyes, and then put two smaller circles and shade them inside, just like that. Then we're going to extend by putting a curved line right here for his mouth. And we're going to tap it off with a straight diagonal line. Next, we're going to give our Elmer the elephant a tail in the shape of a small triangle on the back side of the elephant's oval. And then we're going to add three dash lines for the rest of the tail. After that, we are going to make him look like Elmer the Elephant. So Elmer the Elephant had 
squares all over his body. The squares each are going to represent a different color. We are going to create our very own Elmer the Elephant pattern. So what we're going to use now is we are going to use vertical lines going from the top to the bottom, straight lines throughout the elephant's body. You can make them as wide or as narrow as you like. You are the artist, it is your creation, your masterpiece. Remember, in art, everything is great. We have our own perception, our own interpretation, and our own opinion of what things look like. We never say anything in art is bad. Everything is good because we created it from our hearts, our minds, and our hands. So after I do the vertical lines, I'm now going to do my horizontal lines. Horizontal lines go straight across. I'm going to go left to right across the oval to make the squares using my horizontal lines. Once I'm done sketching my Elmer the Elephant with my pencil, I'm going to take either a black, brown, or any dark color marker or crayon or oil pastel that I have in my home or at school or at work, and I'm going to make it bold by outlining it. So as you can see, mine's outlined in purple, so it sticks out for the viewer to see. After I'm done outlining my whole sketch, I am going to go to and take either my crayons or my oil pastels, my markers, my watercolor paint, whatever you have readily available, and you are going to then color in each square in different colors. So I'm going to start by coloring like this square in green. So I'm going to use all the greens first. I'm going to pick different squares to make green. And I'm going to stay in the lines until my patchwork Elmer the Elephant is complete. Then maybe I want to add some purple in. So I'm going to color some of them in purple. Then maybe I want to take some blue. So I'm going to color in some in blue. Remember to stay in the squares so you can see the squares when you are completed. Remember, elephants aren't patchwork colors. However, we are being creative artists today. So I want you to continue to color yours in at home. I hope you had a great time creating our Elmer the Elephant today. You can also create a background for Elmer by giving him trees and some grass. So we can do some zigzag lines on the bottom in green for the grass. We can add some a tree on the side over here and color that in to show that he is in the jungle or the rainforest and in his own habitat. So here we go, and I'm going to use an organic cloud to make the top of the tree. Be as creative as you want, okay? So I hope you had a great time today, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.